All right, so did you get yourself a drink? Uh, I hope so. So our next topics we're going to be talking about is getting into these sig figs here. And we started off with talking about the marks on a ruler. And so we can always um, look at the estimate based upon that. So if we know that our ruler measures to the tenth of a centimeter, then we're going to be estimating one place past that, which means our estimate would be the hundredth of a centimeter. And so I gave you a few examples here. We said 142.15. We noted that the five was the estimate, which meant the ruler measured to the tenth of a centimeter. Then I said, okay, what if we had 142 centimeters? And we said, okay, that's the ones place is the estimate. And so that means the mark was at the tens of centimeters. And then I said 140. And I sort of told you there's a problem there. Um, and then I didn't give you any answers. And I kind of left it right there. So, if you weren't understanding where the problem was, let's take a look at this. Which number is the estimate? The zero or the four? You see, if the zero is the estimate, then it's the same instrument that we had when we did the 142. But, if the zero is simply holding place and the four is the estimate, now that means the smallest mark is 100 centimeters. And that's the problem. If the zero counts, it's one instrument. If it doesn't count, then it's a different instrument. And that's what brought in the need for significant figures. So, how do we figure out if that zero is significant or not? Well, we've come up with a whole set of rules. Now, on your tests and on your quizzes and any other sort of assessment that I'll give you, I never ask you for these rules. I'm going to give you numbers and measurements, and I'm going to expect you to apply the rules. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. Now that means there's several different ways to understand how to get the number of significant figures in a measurement. I'm going to use one set in this slideshow. I'm also going to put together a second slideshow that's going to cater specifically to figuring out these significant figures. So if you're not catching it in the next couple of slides and you're not figuring it out and you're one of those people like me who hates to memorize things, then I suggest that you go on and look at the other PowerPoint that's on there called the Atlantic and Pacific Rule. So, now, the only thing that's in question here are the zeros. All other numbers are going to count. So how do we determine it? Well, those at the end of a number before the decimal point, they don't count. In other words, if my value was 12,400, then what this rule is telling us is those two zeros are holding place, and therefore they do not count. They're not significant. This number would only have three significant figures, the one, the two, and the four. And because it's stopping at the four, that means that the estimate is the four, and the mark would be in the place of the two, or the thousands place. And I keep emphasizing the place, and I know you don't use that quite often. In fact, you probably learned it back in grade school, and you haven't seen it since, but I'm going to ask you you got to get familiar with those because that's how we're going to determine the estimate and the number of significant figures when we look at calculations. Now, the second rule we have is if the number is smaller than one, zeros before the first number don't count. In other words, 0 0.045 would only be two significant figures, the four and the five. The zeros here, again, just like in the first rule, are simply holding place, and so we don't count them. Now, zeros between other significant figures will always count. So again, I give an example of 1,002. Here we can see the two zeros are pinned in between 1 and 2, and therefore we have four significant figures in this value. Now, zeros at the end of a number after the decimal point do count. And that throws people for a loop usually. But if I look at 45.8300, those two zeros actually count. And it seems weird. They shouldn't. And that makes sense if you're struggling with that. Here's how I need you to think about it, though. If I had $45.83, would I need to tell you those two zeros are at the end? In other words, the magnitude of the value would be exactly the same with or without those zeros. So, in the chemist's point of view, then, if I took the time to write those zeros, they must be meaning of something. And here, it means they do count. And so that measurement then measured out to the ten thousandths, right? So the ten thousandths place was the estimate. All right. Now, 
An easy way to remember this is if the zero is simply holding a place, in other words, taking that zero away will affect the magnitude of the number, then it doesn't count. So it's kind of backwards. If I have it and I need it, then it doesn't count. But if I have it but I didn't need it, then it must count. So again, different ways to think about the significant figures and trying to figure out these zeros. Now, if a zero is a measured number, or if it's the estimate, it automatically counts. And so you'll have to figure out how to make a count if you need to. Now, only measurements have significant figures. So in other words, if it's a counted number, like I have 18 people enrolled in my class, then that's an exact value and is not considered a measurement. And so sig figs will not apply to that. So the 18 wouldn't be two sig figs. It would be an unlimited numbers of six fi sig significant figures. And we'll see how that works out when we look at calculations. Now, if it's a word that represents an understood value, like a dozen is exactly 12. Again, it's referring to a count. So if I said, oh, it's a baker's dozen, most of us know that that means there must be 13. And again, it's going to be a count. Now, if it says literally in the question or in the statement, a piece of paper is measured, after that, it's a measurement, regardless of how close it is or not. So when we look at, for instance, loose leaf paper, it's 11 and a half by 8. And so here I say it's measured to be 11 inches tall. Well, then that's your significant figures right there. There are two significant figures. Now, being able to locate and count those significant figures is going to be an important skill to you. And again, what's going to separate chemistry from other courses is that we're going to be building on things. And so it takes a little while to actually get to the chemistry because we want to make sure you have a lot of these tools in your toolbox before we start getting into the chemical world. And so significant figures is going to be one of those things. When we do calculations, we'll typically be applying significant figures to every calculation we perform in this class. And so you need to get this under control and relatively quick. So if you need some extra help, then feel free to set up an appointment with me. We can do a Zoom together or come to a Zoom class, a Zoom office hour, something along those lines, but make arrangements to get the help that you need. Um, if you can't meet with me, then um, check out different tutoring uh, situations. Um, right now we're underneath COVID, so maybe um, you can get to the campus for the Student Resource Center. Maybe you cannot. It depends on how they open the doors and different things that they do. All right. But either way, you want to make sure you get help somehow. Don't wait to the last minute and don't let anything build up. The minute you feel like you're struggling with something, come get a hold of me and we'll work you through it so that you can get past that. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is tell me how many significant figures are in each of these measurements. So, for instance, if I say there's 458 grams, how many sig figs? Correct. There would be three, three significant figures. Right? There's no zeros, so we don't have to worry about it. How about 4,085? Well, now we have a zero. So is that zero significant, or is it not? Well, if we think about our rules, we can see that it's pinched in between two numbers that are not zeros, which are significant. Therefore, that zero is also significant. And so we have four significant figures here. How about 4,850? Well, now that zero being on the end changes things, doesn't it? Because now that zero is holding a place. And since it's holding a place, it's not significant. This value then has three significant figures, the 4, the 8, and the 5. How about 0 0.0485 or 0 0.04085 or 40.004085? I know some of you are working faster than others, and so if you need to, you can take a pause right here, work your way through it, and see how you're doing. If you didn't need the pause, then the answers are going to be three, four, and all of them. So in the case of the zero point, whoops. In the case of the 0 0.0485, that was three. In the case of the 0 0.004085, that was going to be four. And in that final one, all of them are going to be significant. All right, so those were pretty straightforward. Let's make it a little bit more difficult here. How about 405.0? So now we have two zeros. There's one between the four and the five, which we know since it's in between two significant figures, it must be. And then there's the zero on the end. And yes, that zero is significant. So this value, 405.0, is four significant figures. 
How about 4,050? Well, now that zero on the end is simply holding a place. The zero between the four and five, again, is between two significant figures, automatically counts. And so the zero on the end is holding place and is not, which means 4,050 would be three significant figures. How about 0 0.450? Well, here we have zeros on both ends. On the left side, the first zero, the zero point, that one is holding place. It's just telling us where the decimal point is. The zero on the end, though, all the way to the right, that one is not needed, which means it is significant. And so this value also has three significant figures. How about 4050.05? Right, now all of them are in between numbers, which means they all count. So this has six significant figures. 0 0.050060. Well, now we have the first two zeros at the front of the number. Again, are holding place, telling us where that decimal is. They are not significant. Three zeros between the five and the six are between the five and the six, and therefore are significant. And finally, we have the zero that follows the six. It's not needed, and so therefore it is significant. This value then has six significant figures. All right, next we're gonna look at the rules for calculations. All right.